My name is Perry Tate. I'm the designer and manufacturer of Fog Blaster, designed for airborne sanitization. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. It's quite long. However, I've made particular effort to make it compelling and entertaining, as well as highly informative. This presentation is prepared for the likes of business leaders, local government, and policymakers who are involved in influencing the reopen strategies for businesses who offer venues for people to gather to socialize, like bars and restaurants, to receive a personal service like hair salons, gyms and beauticians, as well as offices, warehouses and factories that cannot operate with a work from home strategy. Enough said, let's proceed with the presentation. The Fog Blaster Design. The Fog Blaster was designed during the pandemic of 2020. Using science and knowing our target, we incorporate three of the four known oxidizers that destroy coronavirus and any other pathogen. It is the most effective and efficient sanitizing tool. The fourth oxidizer or sanitizer is called UVC, and we cannot incorporate UVC in fog blaster because it takes too much time with proximity to be practical for operator provided sanitization. So, who can we help to reopen their businesses? Well, we've prepared a short video to crystallize our awareness of how extensive the possibilities are. This contents page is very helpful for anyone using the source keynote or PowerPoint to present in person as compared to using this video presentation. Just note, click on any link to go to a subject page and at any time return to this contents page, click on the home icon in the bottom right hand corner. Likewise, we have a whole section on frequently asked questions and you can access them by clicking the links or to find this page again, return to the contents page and click down one slide. About Fog Blaster manufacturing. Well, we thought this was an important topic to cover as even though we are from Australia and New Zealand, our factory is in China. We started in 2011. We we're already living in China, I and my son. We've continually developed innovative and high-tech window cleaning tools, resulting in faster, better and safer window cleaning for mobile contractors. In 2017, we opened a company to expand our ability to manufacture more tools and export globally. Being resident in China in January 2020 at the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, we followed the news and the science reports about coronavirus and its transmission. It was scary times. We knew early coronavirus was spread by droplet and aerosol transmission, not by just touching surfaces. Observing the rapid uptake of sprayers, often called foggers, developed for the application of pesticides and insecticides, as well as battery powered antibacterial sprayers to sanitize surfaces, we set out to design and manufacture an airborne sanitizer that would actually work on airborne viruses. Fog Blaster is that solution. Our company is called Ningbo Summit New Material Technology Company Limited. Winter is coming. <laughs> it, it sounds a bit like the Game of Thrones and unchallenged, if we do nothing, it is potentially very serious, especially to those known as the vulnerable. It's well known that the time of year we have come to know as the flu season is also the season for increased transmission of coronaviruses, pneumonia, and other infections. The change of season 
brings an increase in challenges to all of our immune systems. Now, each strategy contributes to slow the spread of coronavirus. So which strategies can we employ and do we already know to employ and in which order? Well, the social distancing. As coronavirus is airborne, heavier droplets will fall to a surface or a fomite within six feet of the person who exhales. So by social distancing, we reduce the risk of droplet transmission. The washing of hands. Well, washing hands or sanitizing your hands protects customers from fomite transmission and then self-inoculation by touching their own eyes, nose, and mouth. There's masks. Well, by wearing a mask, an infected person slows down and reduces the exhaled droplets to airborne. The exhaled breath, cough, or sneeze are caught by the mask. And whilst still expressed, the distance of the propulsion is reduced. And then there's airborne sanitization. Fogging with an aerosolized disinfectant and using negative ions, the cumulative viral load of aerosolized coronavirus is able to be reset. A true aerosol fog sanitizes the airborne virus. I mean, let's face it, when a business has unmasked patrons or customers, even with social distancing, the aerosol viral load is still present. The fourth dimension. We know what to do for surfaces and droplet transmission, but businesses are still closed because there's no known solution to reduce airborne transmission. We want to introduce you the fourth dimension of sanitization, which is for airborne. So the first dimension is social distancing, six feet to reduce droplet transmission. Then masks, again, to reduce droplet transmission by holding it into the mask from somebody who might be infected. Then there's hand washing, which is to reduce fomite or surface transmission in case somebody's droplet has landed on a surface, somebody touches it and then self-inoculates, like infects themselves by touching their eyes or their nose or their mouth. And the fourth dimension is the one that everybody's been waiting for to be able to reopen business. We call it fog blaster because that's our product, but it's, it's being able to blast an aerosol to reduce aerosol transmission. It's the aerosol transmission which is keeping the businesses closed. So who are we talking about here? Who are the target businesses for reopening? Well, we know that using a structured sanitization protocol, we can reset the viral footprint in a room or a venue. Bars, beauticians, hair salons, restaurants, hotels, aged care centers, convention centers, schools, and any business that offers patrons a service by social gathering, education, and more. Businesses that have staff that cannot work from home, offices, warehouses, food processing, essential services, and more. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Each business type will need a similar yet customized sanitization protocol. So let's cover this principle we've called structured sanitization protocol. While it's not broadcast because there's no known solution, it is the fact of airborne or aerosol transmission of coronavirus that is the reason businesses are closed. The risks of transmission are just too high and the consequences too grave. Whether airborne sanitization is performed once every 60 minutes or once every 90 minutes, the cumulative viral load in an unventilated space can be sanitized. If it were a bar, all patrons could go outside for five to 10 minutes while the rooms were sanitized, albeit it is safe to sanitize with hypochlorous acid with patrons present. If it were a restaurant, there could be scheduled sittings with sanitizing intervals at the end of each sitting. If it were a hotel, a maid can sanitize before she cleans and after she cleans, and again, 
as a patron is checking in. I mean, after all, the maid goes to the room to check the minibar as the patron checks out. If it were a conference center, speakers could alternate rooms, with room A being sanitized while the audience is in room B listening to lesson one, and room B sanitized as they move to room A to hear lesson two. To learn more, click this link to thefogblaster.com forward slash SSP. We've prepared a short video to explain structured sanitization protocol. It's got a very patriotic American feeling to it, to represent the feeling of the normal we knew in contrast to the new normal we're currently enduring. To really understand fog blaster and airborne sanitization, we must first understand more about coronavirus. As an airborne, coronavirus stays suspended in air for up to 24 hours. I mean, at as small as 0.16 microns diameter, there is no way it is being affected by gravity to pull it down to a surface like what happens when it is in a droplet of like 50 microns. Coronavirus is spread by the exhalation of an infected aerosol in breath, coughs, and sneezes. This aerosol, our breath, is invisible. I mean, unless you're out in freezing temperatures and you can see it really clearly, or you breathe against a mirror and you can see it condensate or a cold piece of glass. A simple experiment to see one's own breath is to simply place your nose against a cold glass or a mirror and breathe out your nostrils. Your aerosol breath will condensate on the glass and become visible. Notice how dense the coverage is from the fine nano droplets we expire. Science reports state that coronavirus can stay potentially infective, suspended in unventilated air for up to 24 hours. You can see that in the series of charts at the bottom of this slide, where the decay or breakdown of the protective coronavirus RNA envelope is charted as an aerosol against survival on surfaces like copper, cardboard, stainless steel, and plastic. Now to put these charts in perspective, the best result in the chart is for copper, and it is documented elsewhere that coronavirus can remain active on copper for just four hours, whilst it can remain active on plastic for up to six days. So, what does that mean? Well, it means as well as cleaning and sanitizing surfaces, we also need to sanitize space, the air. This video is made using magnets to explain what happens 
at an invisible molecular level when negatively charged aerosol disinfected loaded nano droplets encounter positively charged aerosol virus loaded nano droplets in air. This diagram illustrates the difference in the behavior of droplets in air, which will fall to a surface in three to nine seconds, and an aerosol, which remains suspended in air and really never falls to a surface at all. And when coronavirus is present in a droplet as compared to an aerosol, it will drop to a surface with the effect of gravity within three to six feet. And that's the underlying principle of social distancing. Coronavirus is present in every exhale of all infected people in a room. When we as people breathe, we exhale an aerosol. When we as people cough or sneeze, we exhale droplets and aerosols. Effective sanitization against coronavirus can only be achieved by sanitizing the surfaces from fomite transmission, mostly due to droplets, and by sanitizing air, which has a cumulative viral load added to by each infected exhale, cough, or sneeze, regardless of a person's symptoms. The story gets worse. Whilst as a virus-loaded droplet, it will fall to a surface before the droplet evaporates, a virus-loaded aerosol will evaporate, leaving coronavirus, mini coronavirus, suspended in air with a diameter of around 0.16 microns. When coronavirus is exhaled in cluster droplet or aerosol form, the cluster is large, large enough to be caught in a mask. See the chart. The upwards pointing arrow is to the diameter of a human hair. It's the brown circle. Follow that two to the right and you see the smallest bacteria. Then follow the arrow pointing down and notice the smallest bacteria and then to the left the spectrum of the size of viruses. As an aerosol and after the evaporation the virus remains airborne through an effect called Brownian motion. A Brownian motion is the random motion of particles suspended in a medium, that is, in a liquid or a gas. In our case, coronavirus is the particle randomly suspended in air, the air that we breathe. Remember the video we just watched with the magnets? To effectively catch a virus in the air, we rely on an ionic attraction. And to affect airborne ionic attraction, our disinfected loaded clusters need to be an aerosol. 
By definition, an aerosol is less than 5 microns in diameter. Now why is that important? Well, the smallest droplet most sprayers and misters can deliver is like 40 microns in diameter. By contrast, using thermal fogging technology, fog blaster can be dialed to deliver both white and blue steam, which means a range from 30 microns down to 0.25 microns. Well, how do we know the size of an aerosolized droplet? Well, blue steam is visible when the droplet size is the same as the wavelength of the color of light being refracted. It's called the Tyndall effect. The blue light wavelength is 400 to 470 nanometers, which equates to a droplet size of 0.4 to 0.47 microns. Now here's a warning for you. Fake foggers add a blue light LED to the jet stream outlet to make it look like they're delivering blue steam. Another problem with sprayers and misters is that they saturate surfaces, often requiring a wipe down afterwards. But if they are sprayed on paper, well, it just curls up as it absorbs the disinfectant liquid. The answer is to use a dry fog. And what is a dry fog, I hear you ask? <laughs> Well, a dry fog is practically dry to touch. It's an aerosol. Knowing how small the virus is and how it remains airborne so long, the importance of the size of the disinfectant aerosol becomes obvious. The smaller the droplet size, the higher the electrostatic charge on each droplet, and the longer the droplets will remain airborne to pursue an ionic traction to the virus. Once attracted, the disinfectant and the negative ions effect the oxidation of coronavirus, influenza, bacteria, and other pathogens. Many disinfectants use chlorine in some molecular arrangement. One of the simplest disinfectants is HOCl. That's H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, and Cl for chlorine, or as it is commonly called, hypochlorous acid. It's made by applying the process of electrolysis to salt and water. What makes it so biologically friendly is that HOCl is the very same disinfectant our white blood cells make when we get an infection to protect our body. While fog blaster can be used with Lysol, Vital Oxide or any other diluted disinfectant or any disinfectant made by electrolysis, there is a consensus that there is none safer than hypochlorous acid for continual use with both venue patrons, staff, and operators. Okay, let's lighten this up a bit. Here is Raymond Burke from Spraywash Academy in USA, using Fog Blaster to make a point. So does the Fog Blaster make fog? Yeah, the fog blaster makes fog. If you are considering any fogger, you can ask for a demonstration video like this. If you test a unit yourself, you can add the smell test, re-enter the room briefly after five minutes, and again after 10 minutes. If you can smell the disinfectant, it is still present as an airborne aerosol. Just like like, like when you get a whiff of Chanel number no. 5 when a person wearing it as a perfume walks by several feet away. The Chanel number no. 5 is an aerosol released from the skin of its wearer. During the COVID pandemic, we hear a lot about electrostatic foggers. Everyone wants an electrostatic fogger, but what does it mean, an electrostatic fogger? Well, contrary to the claims of others, Electrostatic fog is designed for spread. Adding an electrostatic charge to droplets serves two functions. The first one is to keep droplets apart in the air. By applying the same charge to all droplets, they will repel each other rather than agglutinate or cluster when they collide in the air. This agglutination makes larger droplets, that being heavier, drop out of the air. The second reason is to spread droplets as they land on a surface. By applying the same charge to all droplets, 
when they land on a surface and another droplet randomly wants to land on top of it, the ionic charge will repel the second droplet to beside the landed droplet rather than on top of it, delivering a greater coverage with less chemical or disinfectant in our case. So it's spread in the air as an aerosol and spread on the surface for coverage. The reason we use negative ions and negatively charged aerosol with disinfectant is because the process of killing or neutralizing coronavirus is to oxidize the positively charged RNA envelope or shell such that it breaks down and cannot protect the viral DNA within it, rendering it ineffective or dead. What electrostatic fog is not is it is not for wraparound effect. Many foggers are sold as electrostatic foggers for the purpose of wraparound. That is, that the fog will electrostatically find its way to the reverse side of an object and be electrostatically drawn to the other side to provide a good disinfection cover. Well, it's simply not true. Wraparound is caused by a scientific phenomenon called draft. The low pressure zone on the opposite side of the object draws the jet stream in behind the object. The droplets do get to the other side, but not with reliable coverage, and they're not electrostatically attracted because the object is on the earth and the earth carries a neutral charge. Now a droplet carries a fraction of the charge of an aerosol as the transfer of ionic charge is inversely proportional to the surface area of the droplet particle or aerosol. So the smaller a droplet is, the more ionic charge it has in relation to its surface area compared to a larger droplet. Okay, we've got all the science out of the way. Let's talk about Fog Blaster. Fog Blaster is a patent pending and that is utility patent pending fogger with certifications and laboratory test reports supporting our design claims. Fog Blaster is a fogger for disinfectant with added negative ions and added ozone as oxidizers. It's like a triple attack on coronavirus. Again, to be effective with sanitizing against coronavirus, we need to oxidize the RNA envelope of the coronavirus cell. Fog Blaster is an electrostatic thermal fogger, a jet stream disinfectant in an aerosol for surface and airborne sanitization. With over 134 million nano droplets per cubic inch, combined with over 10 million negative ions, and less than 0.05 parts per million ozone added to the jet stream, Fog Blaster is a highly effective airborne sanitizer. Suitable for sanitizing surfaces, frequently touched objects, and airspace, Fog Blaster is unique in the market of sanitizing tools. What's our goal? It's to prevent and protect patrons customers, staff, and operators from coronavirus and, going forward, other pathogens. The benefits of using Fog Blaster are a dry finish. A dry finish. Using thermal fogger technology, Fog Blaster delivers a dry fog that will not saturate surfaces, paper, or anything. Electrostatic technology. Delivering a negatively charged aerosol and negative ions to neutralize positive pathogens. Fast service. No wipe down. Working with a single fogging action, we achieve complete coverage, meaning a faster sanitization service. Environmental. Whilst you can use most disinfectants in Fog Blaster, HOCl or hypochlorous acid is biologically friendly. Nano droplets. The droplet size is critical to airborne sanitization and Fog Blaster makes them really small. And in the end, dead pathogens. Effective sanitization is not virtue signaling. It's actual oxidation of pathogens. 
As an acronym, these words spell DEFEND, to defend the community from airborne transmission of coronavirus. Of course, at some point you want to see the fog blaster specifications. Well, here they are. A couple of things that are noteworthy. Fog blaster is 1200 watts, available in 110 volt for USA, 220 volt for Europe and UK, and 240 volt for Australia and New Zealand. And if you follow the downward pointing red arrow between blue steam and maximum white steam, the usage rate of disinfectant is from 0.35 gallons per hour in the blue steam setting and up to 0.85 gallons per hour, which is the maximum setting, which is a white steam. This is important when assessing the additional cost of providing a sanitation service to any venue. Now, fogging diluted Lysol is maybe the cheapest way. However, fogging hypochlorous acid may be the safest way. One of the unique features of Fog Blaster is the ability to use two Fog Blasters at the same time for airborne sanitizing large venues like conference centers, warehouses, food processing plants, cool rooms and schools. Both janitorial staff and mobile contractors can provide rapid and efficient airborne sanitization 20 feet wide per pass with double blast. Fog Blaster has international safety certifications, including CELVD, that's the European equivalent of UL, FCC for the USA, and SAA compliant for Australia and New Zealand. Fog Blaster also has laboratory reports produced at different settings. This featured page shows the spectrometer readings for grain density or the number of aerosol droplets in the air at three feet from Fog Blaster, an incredible 8 million pieces per cubic centimeter, which equates to 134 million per cubic inch. This just goes to show that when we say we are fighting an invisible enemy, we are fighting it with a lot of invisible soldiers. The first step of sanitizing is called cleaning. Surfaces that are potentially dirty need to be cleaned first before we can either sanitize or disinfect. The reason is that fogging can only apply to surfaces. However, organic debris can have pathogens in and under it. So our technique is to clean and sanitize surfaces, then to sanitize airborne. Now let's just do a quick review. Coronavirus transmission from exhaled droplet and aerosol occurs in three ways. There's fomite transmission, fomite means surfaces. The virus is picked up by the hands of a person and they self-inoculate. That means they infect themselves by touching an entry point like nose, eyes or mouth. Then there's droplet transmission, being close enough to an unmasked person such that the droplets can be inhaled. And then there's aerosol transmission, which is regardless of the proximity, anyone in the room can inhale a viral load. So if we have a look at the three steps, step one is to clean the surfaces. Science says you cannot successfully sanitize an organically dirty surface. Step two is to sanitize the surfaces. By fogging the clean surface, one can achieve a 99.9% .9 kill of the virus present. And step three is sanitize airborne. By fogging from the ceiling down with an aerosolized disinfectant and negative ions, we can sanitize the cumulative aerosolized viral load present in the airspace. We made this video for our authorized fog blasterers, <laughs> but it's really there to demonstrate their services to their customers. By watching it, one can get a clear and compelling understanding of the difference between fog blaster in action and any sprayer or mister alternative. Let's watch it.
Fog Blaster is available in several kit options. The Pro Sales and Service Kit is for mobile contractors who want to demonstrate, sell and provide the service. Everything they need, it's like a business in a box. Double Blast Service Kit has two Fog Blasters in a case. And this means that you can have two operators exercising surface sanitizing and then together on one pole airborne sanitization up to 20 feet wide in a single pass can be achieved with the double blast kit. The basic service kit is a cased package for mobile contractors and janitorial for the sanitization of both surface and airborne. So this pack includes the pole. The light service kit is a fog blaster and some hand blasters. It's for locations with ventilation such that a complete airborne sanitization is either not practical or not needed. The included hand blaster atomizers are for cleaning and wiping frequently touched objects like bench tops and door handles. One example is a maid servicing a hotel room after a patron or a waiter during a scheduled sanitization interval. No Frills is a fog blaster in a box. We can provide it with custom branding, OEM design, and for large corporate orders where it's wanting to be distributed nationally, then that brings the cost of the fog blaster down. And we have some MOQs, some minimum order quantities, which apply to No Frills. Here, you can see the contents of three kits each focusing on the target service to be provided and maximizing both ergonomics and efficiency of the sanitization service. Fog Blaster production capability is over 100 per day as at the 1st of September 2020 and targeted for 200 a day. That is 1,000 a week by 14th of September. Our maximum production capability is estimated at 5,000 fog blasters per week. We have a dedicated online training website which can be replicated or shared for in-house training. Visit www.sanitizetraining.com What is often missing in product design is consideration of worker safety. And worker safety is often impacted by ergonomics. As designer and manufacturer of water-fed window cleaning poles that can clean up to eight stories, we're very aware and conscientious about repetitive motion injury, especially when a task requires the use of the body in an off-center, you know, where it's imbalanced. So when we ask a worker to hold a pole for hours at a time in a large venue, we need to consider the load on the worker's arms, shoulders and back. Many sprayers and misters require the operator to carry like a gallon of water in one arm and a hand tool in the other, which is very off-centered. Fully loaded, fog blaster is around 4 pounds, that's 1.8 kilograms, for use with surface sanitization, that's like handheld operation. For airborne sanitization, fog blaster is fitted to a pole and there is a belt mounted pole holster to rest the pole in. So the load of the fog blaster is borne by the body, thereby saving the wrists, arms, shoulders and back from a non-ergonomic load. And of course we have an operation manual for fog blaster. If you're interested, click the link below and download it. Some of the coming soon to Fog Blaster items are, we have a QR verification system that we're developing right now, and it's basically a sanitized checkpoint app that will enable service providers, property managers, business owners, and uh, quite possibly local government to be able to inspect and verify the provision of sanitization services, in particular in relation to structured sanitization protocol implementation and and exercise. We also have a community app, Fog Blaster, on Apple and Google Play. 
Um, you can download it. Uh, it's basically for community involvement and asking questions backwards and forwards among the community. At present, it's quite nascent as we want to develop it according to the needs of the community as they arise. And then already we have one SSP, um, like Structured Sanitization Protocol, as a general, but we also want to assist uh, industry uh, to develop um, a sanitization protocol for each industry. So the idea of daily sanitization service by mobile contractors is a start, you know, like overnight sanitization, but it's really not the answer for the cumulative viral load in the airspace in public indoor venues where there's limited ventilation. So structured sanitization protocols are needed for sanitization against airborne transmission maybe every 60 to 90 minutes so businesses can reopen in the cold weather, allowing people to you know, be able to take advantage of the indoors and um, heated places and stuff like that. So you know, we really need to address this you know, really quite rapidly because uh, winter is approaching us quickly. Okay, next topic. Now we get a lot of questions about disinfectants, so we would be remiss not to cover that in, our, in this presentation. So let's do that. I mean, the use of disinfectant is critical to airborne and surface sanitization. Chlorine in a droplet form is a very powerful oxidant. I mean, the process of sanitization and disinfection is actually the oxidation of a coronavirus, influenza, bacteria, or any other pathogen. And many disinfectants use chlorine in some molecular arrangement. One of the simplest disinfectants is HOCl, or hypochlorous acid, made from applying the process of electrolysis to salt and water. That's all it is, salt and water. What makes it so biologically friendly is that HOCl is the very same disinfectant our white blood cells use or make when we get an infection. So while fog blaster can be used with Lysol, with Vital Oxide, or with any other diluted disinfectant, or any disinfectant made by electrolysis, there is none safer than hypochlorous acid for continual use with customers and operators. Salt and water. That's right. That's all there is to hypochlorous acid. Now there are currently 10 providers of HOCL that are EPA registered in USA, as well as many sub-registrations for the companies using the equipment that hold the original EPA registration. At different concentrations, hypochlorous acid is used for all sorts of purposes. Like at 100 parts per million, it's used for food sanitization, like sanitizing chicken against salmonella in food processing plants and restaurants. At 200 parts per million, it's usable as a hand sanitizer and also used for wound care in hospitals. At 400 parts per million, it is a disinfectant, albeit you can only claim that with EPA registered HOCL. And you can find 500 parts per million in eye drops, like prescribed by your optometrist. Now at 200 parts per million and below, the shelf life of hypochlorous acid is like 18 months but over that it gets less stable, albeit it can be stabilized. So hypochlorous acid at 400 parts per million has a shelf life of between 30 and 90 days. This video really explains hypochlorous acid and its benefits better than I can. It's so compelling that over time, we should all change to using hypochlorous acid in every home, business, janitorial company and hospital. This video really explains hypochlorous acid and its benefits better than I can. It's so compelling that over time we should all change to using hypochlorous acid in every home, business, janitorial company and hospital. <laughs>
Okay, that's the end of the formal part of the presentation. However, there are some commonly asked questions that we wanted to answer for you. The first one is about coverage, like how much disinfectant is needed. Well, using a thermal fogger means you have an aerosol application of disinfectant with complete coverage. And taking the numbers from the agricultural industry, you're going to use something like 25% less the volume of disinfectant compared to sprayers, which are often referred to as foggers, but they're not. Now, as a general rule for you to rely on, we have a 16-ounce bottle um, with the fog blaster for the disinfectant, and that 16-ounce bottle of disinfectant will cover around 1,000 square feet of area, including both surface and space fogging. Consideration should be given to the complexity of surfaces when you're preparing a quote. How many frequently touched objects, how much furniture, and how many freestanding objects, as they all take more time. As an example, let's take a, a ballroom before set up for a trade show, which is a large area with no objects, which could be sanitized with double blast in a fraction of the time, compared to the same space being sanitized between sessions if the ballroom were used for a conference facility with tables and chairs laid out. Now you might ask, okay, that's the coverage, what's the cost? And at a blue steam setting, which is the lower setting, of fog blaster, then this would equate to around $20 an hour if you're paying around $50 a gallon for hypochlorous acid, or $45 an hour if you're running in white steam at maximum flow. Now, of course, if you're using diluted Lysol, it would be like crazy much cheaper than that. Okay, the next question is dwell time. Like, how long does it take to affect a kill of coronavirus? Well, dwell time is referring to the contact time of a disinfectant on a surface for the chlorine to react with the pathogen sufficiently for it to neutralize it. The lower the concentration of a disinfectant, the longer the dwell time recommended. For example, at 50 parts per million hypochlorous acid, it is 10 minutes. At 100 parts per million, it's around one minute. And at 200 parts per million, hypochlorous acid is rated at less than a minute in some reports and 10 seconds in others. Now we recommend for fogging 400 parts per million as a minimum concentration for airborne and surface sanitization. So it's even less. And that's the point. Now you could use other disinfectants. And so you would want to have a look at the test reports from those disinfectants in evaluation of what concentration you might need to affect a very short um, kill time or dwell time uh, for coronavirus. Now, Fog Blaster uses more than just disinfectant. It adds 3 to 10 million negative ions per second to the disinfectant blast. I mean, negative ions are known as an oxidizer, so they add to the, the function of what the disinfectant is doing, as well as adding a safe level of ozone to the jet stream to maximize an effective sanitization service. And ozone is known as like the super sanitizer used in industry for commercial grade sanitization. For airborne, the disinfectant fog must stay airborne for as long as possible, like up to 10 minutes, to have the ability to find and attack each airborne viral droplet that may be present in the, in the room at the time. And we've covered this one a couple of times before, but let's cover it just one more time, like very succinctly. What disinfectants can be used in Fog Blaster? Well, it's any disinfectant that is not made from a dry powder or includes alcohol can be used in Fog Blaster. Tablets and powdered chlorine products are mixed with fillers and binders like sodium carbonate, which is commonly called baking soda, to give them body. That's the, the white you know, base of it. Effervescent tablets also include adibic acid to create that effervescent reaction. Now these products have got no data on the effect of being an aerosol and they scale, you know, like if you look inside your iron, if you're in a, a hard water area, you'll see the white scale or at the bottom of your coffee um, jug or whatever. Then you can see they scale on the thermal unit and ultimately what they do is they insulate it and render it unable to produce steam over time. Now, as Fog Blaster is an electrostatic thermal fogger, there's an electrostatic charge created in the fog. Any arc from any device 
or even from the steam could ignite an aerosolized alcohol solution, which is highly combustible as an aerosol. So that's why we don't recommend anything with alcohol in it. Whichever disinfectant you use, consideration should be given to its safety as an aerosol compared to its designed use as a surface wipe down cleaner. For example, Lysol and Vital Oxide and all of that. So you can have a look at the SDS report um, and see what is written there from whether you would require PPE, whether there's anything in there about inhalation um, in the SDS. Now, while Lysol is cheaper and more convenient and a great place to start for industry, Fog Blaster will continue to promote the use of hypochlorous acid as a biologically safe disinfectant, even though we know there's no way that the whole of America or the whole of the world could roll out enough hypochlorous acid over time. We really believe that over time, you know, with the um, introduction of more hypochlorous acid generation machines, I mean, it is only salt and water, um, put into local areas, supporting local business, um, such that you know all the local businesses could be buying from from a local guy, and then the shelf life is not an issue, and um, the whole community is going to be you know safer by using a more biologically safe and very powerful, mind you. Like you can't imagine that just being made from salt and water it could be so powerful, but it is a very powerful disinfectant. Okay, now this one's a little bit of a funny one. Can a scent be added to fog blaster disinfectant? Well, all disinfectants have a unique smell. Some are potentially harmful to lungs and skin, especially sodium hypochlorite, which is commonly called bleach, which has a very pungent chlorine smell. And it may be the idea of bleach which is driving this question because we know that, that soft washes and pressure washes add a scent to the bleach when they're soft washing homes, for example, so that the, it disguises the smell of the bleach, you know, for the customer. Now, Lysol has a brilliant smell. It's the hospital smell, which is quite reassuring to customers. So we kind of really like the idea of using Lysol um, for that reason. Hypochlorous acid has a faint chlorine smell. It's nothing like sodium hypochlorite. Um, and it's equally as reassuring. It's a very clean smell. And science studies have reported it is safe to inhale as an aerosol. Now, before fogging with a disinfectant, please read SDS sheets for PPE requirements when using any disinfectant as an aerosol. The SDS will refer to inhalation. That's, that's the part you want to read. Okay. This question is probably the most commonly asked question like why does fog blaster not use a battery pack well the answer is really easy I mean, battery packs range from 16 to 20 watts and they're used in sprayers basically simple units using a low powered pump to force water through a misting nozzle is one way or you see the other way is that they have an air pump which is like a reverse vacuum cleaner used to add water through an what's called an atomizing nozzle right so they basically blow the water past the past the nozzle and it draws and shatters the the water that's being fed to it into little droplets. But these units cannot make an aerosol. They make fine droplets, and even they claim the sprayer is electrostatic, the amount of charge that can be applied to a droplet from a 16 watt battery is irrelevant. And often it's actually the opposite charge to the charge needed to attract a virus and an RNA. So they could be running a positive charge on the on the actual droplet but but for that all that we say about that it's it borders on irrelevant because they they just can't add a real surface charge to a large droplet the downside to battery powered misting sprayers is that they saturate surfaces and the atomizing units well they just blow the heck out of any of the paper in the room and quite often the operator has to wipe down you know all sensitive surfaces and there's another risk which is introduced and that is the risk of a patron slipping on a wet floor because they genuinely leave the floors wet the upside of a battery pack is the convenience of the operator albeit the batteries only last like 12 to 16 minutes before needing being changed but unfortunately like when we're dealing with a pandemic when a company puts operator convenience ahead of the efficacy for the customer, their patrons, and their community at large, there's a misalignment of representation when offering a sanitization service 
if the whole focus is around the convenience of the operator as compared to the level of sanitization which is provided. And that's why, you know, we have developed Fog Blaster, you know, very much wanting to make a battery pack, but very much not able to. And we will not and cannot compromise that so that we have operator convenience. It's it's a trade-off. We either have operator convenience or we have an effective airborne sanitizer. The other one is like, because maybe somebody's never heard of Fog Blaster, never heard of a thermal fogger, never heard of triple attack technology. And then they say, well, are there any other industries? And never heard of hypochlorous acid, right? And they say, are there any other industries that are already using Fog Blaster or using hypochlorous acid and fogging and all that? And so we've included some of these articles. You can find it in the PDF version of this or um, somewhere like, but you can see these links here. There are links here around other countries and industry already fogging HOCL. Um, in the UK, it's very prevalent, especially among dentists. So the dentists are already, because they're aerosolizing saliva when they have a high-speed drill in somebody's mouth and their face is like six to 12 inches away. So they're really, really conscious of it. In Japan, shopping centers, schools, public transport have hypochlorous acid foggers running permanently. So that's one of the interesting parts of how the Japanese actually dealt with, you know, how to keep everybody clean. In Korea, they've got um, tents with hypochlorous acid where people walk through this tent and they get fogged on the way in and out of all buildings. So, but that doesn't deal with like what's on their breath, you know, if they've got airborne or if they're infected or anything, but it's a nice way of, you know, giving people sort of making sure that they're clean from the outside. Um, and then there's Loads and loads of other uh, links here which will explain to you how hypochlorous acid is used in hospital cleaning and how people see it as the future and things like that. So there's some great articles um, on it. And you can be very sure that like we're not the first people to think of it. We, we're just really very passionate about promoting it, the use of both fogging and hypochlorous acid. And if this presentation is not enough and people want to geek out even more, the question is, are there any recent scientific articles that prove the efficacy of hypochlorous acid? And oh my, there are loads of them. Like, so you just have to go to Google and go, you know, hypochlorous acid fogging, hypochlorous acid um, efficacy, hypochlorous acid coronavirus, hypochlorous acid COVID-19, hypochlorous acid um, bacteria, hypochlorous acid whatever, like you can go to all these different science sites which publish papers, you know, for different scientists from around the world. And there's just absolutely um, hundreds of articles which I've read. And like, if you want to take the time, you can certainly read them. And there's just, there's nothing which is counter to the power of hypochlorous acid as a disinfectant. It's a very, very powerful disinfectant. The safety of hypochlorous acid the safety of it um, to be in contact with the body, like just, you know, from an EPA perspective, it just says like no PPE required, um, but there's no sort of known risks for the inhalation of it, albeit we re request and, you know, recommend that all operators, you know, wear a mask and goggles because we don't want to, you know, have them with any overexposure in case that came up sometime in the future. But um, really, really, there's, un there's an, a l almost, I mean, obviously there's a limit, but it feels like there's a limitless amount of articles that have been written in the last 10 years and are being written right now as people address, you know, the supply of um, disinfectant, the use of disinfectant, the huge use of disinfectant right now with COVID. And, um, and then people are starting to look at the safety of what is being fogged, what is being wiped what's being sprayed, you know, in, around the place and and the efficacy of that and the safety of that. So the best article that I've found is this one here, which you'll see um, the top link. And if you click on that, um, or we can send it to you if you write to us or write to your distributor, um, we can get that article to you and you can scroll down. It actually talks about fogging hypochlorous acid as well in that article. So, yeah, it, it's um, 100%. You know, you don't have to rely on us like we've read all these articles and um, there's also an FAQ section in 
uh, in the, the fogblaster.com to refer to if you want to, you know, for more and more and more of this if you really want to geek out on it. Oh, and this one is definitely one, like, can fog blaster be used on or near electronic equipment? Now, I've got mates of mine who have got, uh, you know, they're, they're using sprayers and stuff like that, and they've been told by facilities managers and IT managers, like, do not get that stuff near my computers, right? The whole company, you know, is at risk, and everybody's computer is at risk, and they're right, right? Because most of these guys are using sprayers, large droplets, um, agglutinating or clustering on the keyboards, on the, on the electronic equipment, like water and electricity do not mix. Of course, all mains power equipment should pose as a risk. So when it's exposed to water, so it should be turned off, even you know with any fog or anything like that. But from a surface perspective, or whatever, then um, then the risks are, are significantly different. I mean, all electronic equipment around offices and stuff like that are usually 12 volt, 5 volt, 20 volt you know, and water resistant like computer screens and keyboards and stuff like that. So they're kind of safe to be sanitized with fog blaster. I mean, theoretically, this is no more exposure to the water than the use of a wet cloth with a disinfectant wipe down, right? Which is your, you know, recommended, you know, frequently touched objects type, you know, treatment. And this is quite different to sprayers that leave beads of water on or in an appliance such that it could sh short circuit a PCB. That's what the IT manager's worried about. And worse still, if it was to use a powder-based disinfectant, like the tablets, the effervescent tablets, well, they'll leave a chemical residue, right? That's a solid put into solution, fogged, ends up back somewhere. That, that powder is a solid. It's, it's, it's not like chlorine. Chlorine is a gas. Chlorine will end up, you know, in the atmosphere. But, you know, you start putting baking soda and fillers and... Um, you know, white solids in, you're going to get white solids out, you know, and that can build up and then that may be conductive or that may not be conductive, but it may be corrosive if it's acidic or anything like that. So um, those things could build up. And so that's what, the, that's what people are concerned about. And also there's other things like, you know, the effect on stainless steel, will, will it bleach, um, you know, a, a fabric, a piece of art, will it corrode a metal because, you know, all of these things are potentially hazardous in that sense. So care should be taken, you know, thought should be given. Um, but using a dry fog with aerosolized disinfectant and negative ions, the disinfectant has complete coverage and evaporates quickly. I mean, depending on the humidity and the temperature, but you get a very, very fine coverage of a, of a highly efficient, high concentration disinfectant with the negative ions bombarding, you know, if that virus is present, then you've really done everything that you can to, you know, provide a good sanitization service, you know, to um, surface and space. Now, the guys that use ATP testers are using it in clean phase. Remember, we've got clean, sanitized, disinfectant, three different stages, and the clean phase is about bacteria. So the question is, can an ATP tester be used to verify sanitization by fogging? Well, bacteria is a living organism. Under prime conditions, it grows and spreads on surfaces. And an ATP tester is a lumines luminescence detector. And bacteria is highly luminescent, like for example, under UV light, that's how you see luminescence. By swabbing a surface area with a bacterial load and testing it, a high reading of luminescence will occur. Wipe the same surface after cleaning with a disinfectant and then swabbing again, the reading of the luminescence will be lower, such that the effectiveness of the technique of cleaning with disinfectant used is effective to kill and remove living bacteria. Sanitization by fogging should always follow the cleaning process, in effect, after the time of the successful ATP test. Now, bacteria is quite different to virus. Viruses are not living organisms. They are simply DNA. They're, they're dead, right? But we want to talk about killing them because we want, to, we want to neutralize them or deactivate them. Now, when DNA finds its way into living beings like humans, it detaches to a receptor in the body, which is a DNA, or something, and it gets into our DNA and then starts duplicating and spreading process, you know, subject to the immune response of the infected person. But it doesn't, it doesn't replicate, duplicate outside. It doesn't replicate, duplicate on surfaces. And viruses are not fluorescent. So as such, an ATP tester cannot help detect the success of sanitization against viruses. 
and so therefore they should be left now if you want to get one and use it as a demonstration of of the clean process and the idea of clean then that's completely you know what they're designed for and and how they can be used thank you for taking the time to view and comprehend this presentation we have distributors globally to support your businesses and your community let's get our economy and our businesses open again ASAP, that is, as safe as possible.